Hey guys, Dr. Davin Lim, board certified laser dermatologist. Today we'll be talking about how to treat sensitive skin and what I think are three main ingredients or three safe ingredients to try or to use if you have sensitive skin. Quickly, let's talk about skin sensitivity. Skin sensitivity is very common. In fact, the literature shows that um, up to 60 to 65% of patients report sensitive skin. The number is increasing yearly due to the fact that, I guess with the event of um, YouTube, especially with influencers, uh, both on YouTube, Instagram, plus a lot of material out there, people are using um, more active products, things like uh, retinol, ascorbic acid, uh, skin acids, including glycolic acid, lactic acid, salicylic acid. All of these can lead to skin irritation. Skin irritation can also be due to genetic factors. For example, uh, dermatitis, uh, including atopic eczema, as well as seborrheic dermatitis. The most common cause of sensitive skin, excluding uh, topicals, is rosacea, so acne rosacea. That can cause sensitive skin, and it's very common, uh, especially when the uh, climate changes, whether it's too much sun or with uh, changes of uh, temperature. The other cause of sensitive skin is, of course, acne, because when you have acne, um, the upper part of your skin, so your epidermis is compromised, and as a result, you can get skin sensitivity. So whatever you use, whatever topical you use, that can lead to skin sensitivity. Now, this video, I'll talk about three things. I'm not gonna confuse a lot of people and talk about 15 different things. Three things to try if you have sensitive skin. The first thing I think most dermatologists would agree is a moisturizer. And the simplest moisturizer is one made out of molecules, which is also found in your skin, the dermis. So if you have a bioequivalent molecule, in other words, something that's found naturally, the chances of skin sensitivity, irritation, and aggravation is very slim. So we're talking, of course, about hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid can come in many forms, including uh, topicals, so you can get it in creams, you can get it in sheet masks, you can also get it in gels, uh, and most often, like what I use hyaluronic acid for, in injections. Um, so. Hyaluronic acid is a molecule which is found in your dermis. Um, once again, it's naturally forming substance. So the chances of an allergic reaction or an irritant reaction is very slim. If you do get an irritant reaction to, let's say, a topical, the reason being is not because of the hyaluronic acid, it's because of all the other preservatives and the other penetrants which help hyaluronic acid go into your skin. So those, plus fragrances, yeah, because those are the most common causes of skin irritation and skin allergies. It's not the actual molecule itself. So what is hyaluronic acid? Hyaluronic acid basically is a sugar molecule that can be uh, cross-linked, in other words, high molecular weight, or non-cross-linked, low molecular weight. Even if it's low molecular weight, it cannot penetrate through the basement membrane, which means you've got your, your skin, your stratum corneum, your epidermis, your basement membrane, then your dermis. It can't penetrate your um, dermal layer, yeah, into your dermal layer. It can only do that if you're using injections or high pressure air. So as a topical, um, this is unbelievably good for sensitive skin. What can it do? It acts as a humect humectant. Yes, yeah? so a humectant is basically an, a moisturizer. So it sits on your skin uh, and it actually prevents transepidermal water loss. Plus it also can uh, cause a gradient to actually draw water uh, from the upper part of your epidermis down to the lower part of your epidermis. So that's what the humectant does. It's a, it's a catch-22 situation because if you're living in a dry area uh, where the humidity is low, it might do the opposite. But for all intensive purposes, uh, if you use this after a bath or shower, generally speaking, your skin won't react. So humectant, moisturizer, it also acts as a penetrant for, for um, other agents. Uh, for example, if you're using uh, skincare actives, whether it be niacinamide, ascorbic acid, or, or retinoic acid. So it can, for patients who don't have sensitive skin, applying this prior to your um, actives can also decrease the irritation of the active, but also increase uh, the benefits of the active. So the first thing to try, hyaluronic acid. And like I said, every sk single skincare company will have an HA of their, their own. Uh, everything from the in list to the ordinary, all the way up to uh, higher end skincare, yeah, they all have a hyaluronic acid based moisturizer. So, for those of sensitive skin, number one. Number two, number two is azelic acid. So, azelic acid is a very common acid. 
Dermatologists actually use this a fair bit to treat inflammatory skin conditions. So azelaic acid is found naturally, hence that molecule has uh, very little in the way of reactions, especially in the 10 to 20% uh, formulations. So azelaic acid is actually found in uh, various uh, wheat and various grains, so it's a naturally occurring substance. Azelaic acid can be used to treat many conditions, including um, acne, rosacea because of its anti-inflammatory effects together with uh, pigment in particular melasma because it has its effects on the enzyme which makes pigment worse which is basically tyrosinase so it's a tyrosinase inhibitor with acne it can be uh, bactericidal as well so basically it can kill the bacteria p acnes and hence it's use in uh, in acne uh, a lot of dermatologists uh, use it to actually enhance or improve skin quality. By improving skin quality, we mean uh, by decreasing the amount of contrast pigmentation, whether it be red or brown. So if it helps with inflammation of your skin, number one, it reduces redness. And number two, uh, it inhibits pigment. So that way your brown spots get less and your red spots get less as well. And that becomes better skin quality. So azelaic acid can be bought from many, many different uh, sources. Yeah. Most skincare companies, uh, including uh, Paula's Choice, have a azelaic acid range, um, and that can go up to medically prescribed azelaic acid, whether it be as clear or Phenacia. It depends on which country you're at. Some of them are prescription based, and some of them aren't. But azelaic acid is super safe. That's why they dermatologists use it in pregnancy. So it's a category A topical, which means if you have issues. Uh, and you're you know, undergoing conception or you're pregnant or lactating, uh, azelaic acid is super, super safe. So that comes in at number two. The third one, uh, when we talk about vitamins, you know, I always talk about the ABCs, you know, your retinol, your B, which is a B3 niacinamide, and your C, ascorbic acid. For patients with sensitive skin, it goes B first, A, and then C, if you tolerate it. So B is number three, and B3 is niacinamide. So niacinamide uh, is a water-based uh, vitamin, not a fat-soluble vitamin. Fat-soluble vitamins are A, D, E, K. So vitamin B is a, a water-soluble vitamin. And most dermatologists use vitamin B3 as an anti-inflammatory. So if you have angry skin, for example, due to uh, acne or acne rosacea or rosacea, vitamin B3 is our go-to. So anyone who's got sensitive skin and they're after an actives, majority of dermatologists will not pick uh, vitamin C, ascorbic acid, nor will they pick uh, vitamin A, but go straight for B3. So once again, B3 can do many things. It can actually um, help with the barrier function of the skin. So one of the causes of sensitive skin is an impaired barrier function. In other words, your stratum corneum, your upper part, your stratum, um, your stratum corneum plus your epidermis can be uh, compromised because of various things, including scratching, including inflammation, including things like um, acne, including lesions, which actually erupt uh, and cause pustulation or blackheads or whiteheads. So vitamin B3 can actually help with your ceramides. So ceramides are basically lipids in your skin and that can improve uh, your barrier function. That's why we prefer vitamin B3 over uh, ascorbic acid over retinol. Guys, I hope you like that. That's basically three things that you should try if you have sensitive skin. Let's move on. Three things which you should not try, right? So, uh, and once again, I, I think I speak for most dermatologists who would agree with this. Most dermatologists would agree uh, benzyl peroxide is probably a no-no when it comes to irritated skin. Benzyl peroxide can be used as a, a topical to treat various conditions, including acne. So everything from uh, blackheads, whiteheads, papular pustular lesions together with oily skin. The problem with BPO or benzyl peroxide is that it can be irritating, can be very drying. So if you have sensitive skin, acne, rosacea, dermatitis, sebdermatitis, uh, not a good idea to, to go for BPO. If your skin barrier function is repaired, for example, if you use, for example, uh, niacinamide or azelaic acid, and your barrier function is repaired, maybe your skin sensitivities can go down and hence the use of benzoyl peroxide in that context uh, is appropriate. So BPO can be bought over the counter. So that's what you find in things like Proactive, uh, in Benzac AC, um, and even Neutrogena has a, uh, a benzoyl peroxide wash. So if you do have skin sensitivities, possibly, possibly uh, substitute 
benzyl peroxide for something like salicylic acid. Salicylic acid can also be irritating, but, but less so compared to benzyl peroxide, yeah, because salicylic acid has anti-inflammatory uh, effects. So BPO uh, can be started. So if your skin sensitivity decreases because your acne is under better control and your skin barrier function is uh, repaired, you might want to start off with something like a 2.5% rather than the 5% and then increase as tolerated. So as a blanket cover, I'll say no to BPO when it comes to sensitive skin. Number two, uh, retinol. Retinol or retinoids, yeah? Because um, these are very powerful agents, especially prescription medications, as in prescription retinoids. And generally speaking, these retinoids will cause side effects, including skin irritation, such as redness, burning, stinging, irritation, uh, flakiness, um, and itchiness, right? So if you have skin sensitivities, especially with uh, rosacea, the use of uh, prescription retinoids may not be in your best interest. Yes, I know there are studies out there using very low concentration of something like uh, adapalene uh, applied two to three times per week. I realize that these studies are out there, but generally speaking as a go-to, they are hard to modulate, especially for the patients. Uh, if you have a dermatologist who's supervising your treatment, if you have acne rosacea and you would like to try uh, prescription retinoids, then by all means do so. But if you don't have someone, I guess, um, watching over you or guiding you, possibly the use of retinoids may not be in your best interest. And the same thing goes for retinol. Retinol is, um, I guess, a lot less powerful compared to retinoids because retinol needs to be converted to retinoic acid. Hence the use of um, retinol, for example, in a good formulation like Abaji or, or uh, SkinCeuticals. One of those other better brands, I'm, I'm not talking about the actual concentration, I'm talking about just the formulations, yeah? They might be, uh, and once again, in a case-to-case basis, they might be better formulations compared to, for example, um, the cheaper brands. But once again, it really is in a case-to-case basis. So you should try before you buy it because if your skin's irritated, uh, it's, yeah, chances are you can't use it. The third thing uh, I'll th- talk about, the third uh, ingredient is ascorbic acid. So ascorbic acid is known as vitamin C. So ascorbic acid, uh, once again, is part of the uh, triad for the ABCs, yeah? Your retinol, which is your A, B, niacinamide, and C is your ascorbic acid. Ascorbic acid has been prescribed for many decades for the uh, treatment of various skin conditions, including uh, things like pigmentation, uh, wrinkling, sun damage, and overall uh, pore sizing. So vitamin C or ascorbic acid for the best bioavailability of this topical formulations are generally between uh, pH 2.5 to 3.5 hence that's why it's called an acid yeah so generally speaking if you put an acid on sensitive skin uh, with a low pH we're not just talking about an acid acid as in biochemistry acid uh, we're talking about low pH formulations that will invariably flare up your skin. So ascorbic acid is a big no-no. Acne rosacea, um, probably look elsewhere. If you want to give it a go once your barrier function is intact, uh, certainly you can try something like an L-ascorbic acid 10%, uh, maybe use two to three times per week and slowly increase from there. But as a general rule, uh, this is one of my last recommendations for skincare actives. And like I said, my skincare actives for patients with sensitive skin normally goes B A C, uh, C right at the end. Guys, I hope you liked that video. It's a simple video on, uh, I guess, my take on the six ingredients that we talked about. If you have sensitive skin, it is extremely important to find out why, because your sensitive skin may be iatrogenic, in other words, caused by too much product use. Remember, I keep going on about skin thresholds. You've got a threshold in your skin, everyone's skin's threshold is different. Some people have low thresholds, some people have high thresholds. Once you start adding actives, whether it be your ABCs or your um, you know, different skincare acids or different ingredients, tea tree oil, the whole lot, your uh, threshold decreases, Yeah, which means all you need to do is tip that over and hence irritation occurs. So if you do have irritation, it can be as important as even omitting everything that you're using, including your sunscreen. Shock horror, yes. <laughs> Most dermatologists advise that you actually stop your sunscreen for two to four to five days if you have irritating skin. Um, yes, that can actually help, and no, you're not gonna go backwards with that. So just as long as you have adequate sun protection coming off your sunscreen, whether it be a physical block or even a chemical block, it can help. 
Once you establish barrier function of your skin, reintroduce actives one at a time. If you're still struggling, see a dermatologist, see a medical dermatologist because they can arrange patch testing to make sure that you're not allergic. Once again, allergic is very different from irritant dermatitis so that you can uh, improve over time. Guys, thanks for watching this video. Uh, more on the Instagram page, which I keep raving on about because I think it's much easier to educate on um, Instagram than YouTube, but these long format videos still are very useful. I'll see you next week. Bye for now.